Hello, welcome to the introduction to proofs video for sum and product notation. My name is Professor Michael Polyuk. This video is also appropriate for calculus students and stats students who want to learn how to use sum and product notation. The learning objectives for this video are, by the end of this video, participants should be able to write a sum or product in sigma or pi notation, and you should be able to extract a sum or product from the sigma or pi notation. Our motivation is that we want to express things like 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus dot 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 plus 100 in a more compact way and in a more precise way. Precise means without using the dot dot dot. This is useful because the dot 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 sort of hides what's going on and we have to infer what's happening. We have to guess the pattern. And in a case like this, it's simple enough to guess that it's going up by one. But with more complicated ones, uh, it's not as clear. And we don't really want to have ambiguity in math. So we want to come up with a more precise way of expressing these types of sums. This will be especially useful in calculus and statistics, where we use stats, sorry, where we use sums all the time. For example, Riemann sums. As a warm-up example, compute the following five sums. Then make a general conjecture about how the sums relate to the things you're adding. And then express your conjecture in a precise mathematical language. Please pause the video now and take a moment to do this. Now these five sums are not hard to compute, and they end up being 1, 4, 9, 16, and 25. Now what you might notice here, after thinking for a bit, is that these numbers are all square numbers. So our conjecture might be as follows. The sum of consecutive odd numbers is a square. And we can say even more than that, because the square itself is related to how many terms there are. So it looks like if there are five terms, we get five squared. If there are four terms, we get four squared. Three terms, three squared. So expressing that precisely would give us something like this. For every n, where we think of n as the number of terms, if we add up 1, 3, 5, 7, all the way up to 2 times n minus 1, we get n squared. Here this 2n minus 1 is related to this n squared, because this 9 is like 2 times 5 minus 1, and this is 5 squared. So this expression right here is for n equals 5. The previous one is for n equals 4. This goes up to 2 times 4 minus 1, which is 7, and this is 4 squared. So this is a precise way in which these two things are related. Although we still have the dot 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 here, so we'd like to get rid of that at some point as well. We're going to prove this conjecture later on today. Sorry, we'll, we'll prove this conjecture in a later video. Let AI, so, so now we're going to talk about the precise way to express um, sigma notation and precise way to express sums, and the math way is to use sigma notation. So let AI be a real number where I is just some index, and N is going to be our stopping uh, index. So this notation is read the sum from I equals 1 to N of AI. And here, the n is our end index, 1 is our start index, uh, i is our dummy variable, and our ai is our general term. So this notation is quite compact, but we're going from i equals 1, and then we go to i equals 2, i equals 3, i equals 4, i equals 5, and the last thing we stop at is n. So let's add this together slowly. So the first thing we add up is a1. The next thing we add up is a2. Then we keep adding up a3, and the last one we stop at is n. So this notation says add up a1 all the way up to an. Now in my experience, sometimes this ai notation is confusing. 
So if you want, you can think of AI, you can think of this as a function that depends on I. That's really all it is. So if you prefer, you can think of this as f of i, and this would be f1, f of 2, f of 3, all the way up to f of n. So this is the math way of making this precise. Now let's see the computer science way of making this precise. If you want to make a sum precise, then we use a for loop. So for example, let's look at the for loop that computes the sum that we had in the warm-up sum of the odd numbers from i equals 1 to n. So the function that does this, we'll call it total, it starts with sum equals 0, and then for i in the range 1 to n plus 1, where here in, in Python uh, we don't include the end index, so we have to go up by 1. And then at every stage we add to the sum 2 times i minus 1. And here uh, we'll add up, we'll start with i equals 1, add it, and then we'll increment i by 1, and then add that, and then increment it up by 1, and add it, and then we'll stop when we get to i equals n, and then finally it'll return the sum. So for example, if we took the this function of 5, so we added up 5 terms, this would output 25, as we saw in the warm-up. So again, let's take a moment to compare these things. So here, n plus 1 is the end index, with a slight uh, shift because of Python. This is the start index. i is the dummy variable. And this 2i minus 1 is the general term. So what we can see is that this is very similar to sigma notation, where we had the start index, the end index, the dummy variable, and the general term. It's just slight, it's written in a slightly different way. If you're not a CS person, don't worry too much about this. Uh, but if you are a CS person, hopefully this clicks a little more for you. Now let's go through some examples. Here are three examples that I want you to compute. Um, we're going to go through them together, but if you want, take a moment right now and try your best at them. For this first one, we're taking the sum from i equals 1 to 3 of i squared. So we're going to start with i equals 1, which will give us 1 squared. And then we'll go up to i equals 2, which will give us 2 squared. So here's i equals 1. This is i equals 2. And this is i equals 3. And we stop at i equals 3 because that's where the stopping index is. So in total, this will give us 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared, which is 14. Here the ai was just i squared. Now let's go to our next example. This is the sum from k equals 1 to 3 of k. Here we're using k as our dummy variable instead of i, but the actual name of the dummy variable doesn't matter. So again, let's add this up for k equals 1, 2, and 3. So this first one is k equals 1, second one is k equals 2, and the third one is k equals 3. In this case, the function is very simple, the term is very simple. So this is 1 plus 2 plus 3, which is 6. Now in the final example, we're going from i equals negative 2 to 3 of i squared. The interesting thing here is that we can start at i being any um, positive or negative integer, and it still just increments up by one every time. So this is very similar to the first example, only it starts at a lower index. So this should be, the first one will be i equals negative two, and we're adding up two squared. This is i equals negative one, etc. I'm not gonna write them all out. i equals zero, i equals one, i equals two, i equals three. Add up all of these terms together and you get 19. So again, this is the starting index. This tells you what the index is named. This is the end index, and this is the general term. So this is the thing where i is going to be changing. Here are three exercises for you. Take a moment to compute these.
So the first one is i equals 2 to 3 of i, so it's 2 plus 3. The second one is from k equals 1 to 4 of 2. This one doesn't depend on k, so it'll just be adding 2 four times. And the last one is more complicated, but we work our way from the outside in. So the outside sum says j equals 1 and j equals 2. So we're going to have two of these inner sums. Let's write that out slowly. So this first one is for j equals 1. And the second one is for j equals 2. And here I've replaced the j with 1 and the j with 1. Here I've replaced the j's with 2's. Now both of these things are things that you can compute. So this is only one term, it's 1 plus 1. This has two terms, i equals 1 and i equals 2. All right, let's continue on to some theory. Here are three theorems about sums and uh, an exercise related to them. We'll see this in the next video.